So welcome everybody to the Conscious Living Show. And uh, this morning I'm sitting here at my computer and I've got two beautiful people that I'm going to be speaking with. And uh, we've got Tom Cronin and Jackie Pfeiffer. And they are the co-creators of a beautiful project, a film and a book project called The Portal. And the proposition of the film and the book is Can Meditation Save the World? And I was really interested to talk with you, Tom, about what what inspired you, what changed your life and turned your life around because you were not always a meditator. You were um, involved in business, you had a regular job, but something happened, didn't it, that really projected you into a whole new way of, of, of life, really. So what, what was it? What happened? Yeah, um, it, 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 the short version of the story is one word, meditation, um, and then I'll tell you the long version of the story now. Uh, I was in finance as a broker, trading swaps and bonds on international finance markets. And, uh, you know, it was fast paced, it was furious, it was hectic, a lot of screaming and yelling all day long, a lot of adrenaline, cortisol. And there was a particular lifestyle that came with that job. It was late 80s, early 90s. So if anyone's seen Wolf of Wall Street, it was very similar to that type of, um, you know, depiction. And they got that very accurate to what the markets were like for us. Uh, It was fast times. And over time, what happened was I started to get some very strong Uh, I guess, stress responses in my body as a result of the lifestyle that I was living. And I ignored a lot of those symptoms that were showing up, Uh, you know, your typical things like insomnia and anxiety and being fidgety and agitated quite a lot and really struggling with sleep. But uh, over time, I developed some some addictions to a lot of uh, sort of lifestyle habits that were happening then. And these symptoms just exacerbated and got worse and worse as I ignored them and continued on with that lifestyle. And eventually they became, I guess, sounds a little bit cliched, but that's really what was happening was a a complete nervous system breakdown. My nervous system was just not coping with what I was putting it through. And at that point in time, it was mid nineties and I was in my late twenties and I was experiencing some really strong panic attacks, a really dark depression that was really just not having any sense of light at the end of the tunnel. I was felt really trapped in my job earning a lot of money, but not knowing how to get out of that uh, and trapped by my addictions and a lot of self-loathing and a lot of anxiety and panic and really questioning whether I wanted to go on with life. It was a very difficult time. I felt a really sense of being lost and lonely. Mm-hmm. And you know, I was surrounded by lots of amazing people and beautiful family and partner. And it just was in an individual state. And that's a symptom of extreme stress. And it was at that point in time where, you know, I was faced with pharmaceutical drugs and psychiatry, but I, I kind of just had this strong sense of intuition that that wasn't the path I wanted to go down. And then mm-hmm. the universe delivered this very um, synchronized, uh, you know, interview that was a I was watching TV and a guy was talking about meditation and he was a property developer and it was like this light went on in my head it was like the first time I'd really been exposed to meditation and I just had this strong sense of like that's where I wanted to go and that's what I wanted to explore and that was really the pivotal point in my life I see my life as like pre-meditation and post-meditation and it was really like the amazing turning point that everything started to change after that and I did continue on in that job for a long time just, you know, using meditation as a tool for stress management. But it just was so powerful that over time, I just became more and more impassioned about trying to share meditation, the impact of meditation on the world. Mm. And that's when I decided to leave and start the Stillness Project and, and, the, and the movie project. Mm. Mm. So it was really that, it was that real crisis that, um, that motivated you. And um, I think we talked about this before, that the world is at such a crisis point, you know, with climate change, with impending escalation of possible war and trade wars and you know people who are suffering from anxiety and depression so many people are really not coping with the pressures of life um so it seems like you know meditation was a panacea for that but it became more than that didn't it like it was a solution for you but it seems to me that the project that you and Jackie have started to co-create 
in the interviews that you've conducted with people who have been affected by all kinds of conditions in their lives has led to something much, much bigger, much broader, and that has um, implications and is opening up a possible future that we are, we are all look on the brink of exploring, like a whole shift in the evolution of consciousness. So um, it's, it's like from that small pain and crisis has come so much that's going to be of great service to the world. So I, I think it's just amazing that you've, um, you've carried it forward in that way. And, and Jackie, what was your, you, you were sharing about your motivation for meditation and being an investigator and a filmmaker because you've made other kinds of films before this project, haven't you? Yeah, not necessarily films I've been so creatively involved in, I guess not sort of, you know, a soulful, soul connection to the, to the project, but really was thinking about it. Yeah, connections for other reasons. I think some of the other projects that I've done have always been very uh, visionary teams in their, mm -hmm. in their way and trying to um, kind of reinvent the system a little bit. So I think from that aspect, there's some parallels. Obviously, the subject matter is totally different. And this project, yeah, of particular interest to me, I'm kind of always very much into personal evolution and and global evolution and and high performance and kind of like being the best version of me that I can and inf and imp impacting other people positively in the best way that I can and so meditation plays a big role in that and I had uh starting on the project that was the first time really I had a formalized meditation practice and I think before that I'd kind of been doing it finding stillness in my own way I have a tendency to kind of media ban and things like that and spend a lot of time in silence so I, I think that I intuitively was finding my way to create that space for me but in terms of a formalized practice yeah it was starting on the project which was which I think has been really good for me in, in different ways mm. and, and, and did you find that meditation <clears throat> really assisted you to you know for the for the processes to flow more easily was it helpful that you had I think it was, I think it was it was, I mean, yeah, it's like we're kind of trying to do something really different with this project and part of that I think is it makes sense if you're trying to communicate, hey, there's a different way of doing things and, hey, we need to kind of reimagine everything from the ground up. You can't convey that message authentically if you're just doing things the same way that it's always been done before. So while we were trying to break new ground, had to just kind of, yeah, use all the tools at hand and all the channels to try and <laughs> find the right way to tell those stories and and make those unexpected links. So I do think that the I, I do think that it was really helpful I, and keeping my sanity during a very stressful period. But creatively, I do think it, it was I felt a bit more tapped in than I might have done in the past. Well, quite yeah. often, as it's we just break off to meditate. You know, we mm. a few of us who had a practice would you know, find some reprieve and some downtime and just go and collectively meditate together it was really important that we'd just take those breaks out so we could clear our minds. And, mm. you know, it's very intense time making a film and mm. um, it really helped us sort of just realign and just refresh and clear the head and get back on track for the next session. Yeah, and for what you were sharing before um, about Daniel and his comments to you, reflecting that it is your integrity and your authenticity and your alignment, congruence with the values and principles in your own life that you're bringing to the movie and the, and the, and the project because there's no separation between how, who you are and what you are producing and sharing with people. And that was what touched me because the impact that our thoughts and our intents have is, is, is multiplied into the collective. So it's a really good, yeah, it's a really great um, testimony, I think, to your, you know, both of your integrity and your willingness to be seen and to show up in public. Um, because, you know, I think we're moving from that <clears throat> individual, let's, do this for ourselves to now let's be connected to 
our, you know, the, to the, the totality of, of the collective, the community, the world. So um, I think that's very exciting. So we look forward to hearing more about the stories and the book and the film. And uh, thank you so much for um, having a chat with us today. Thanks, no problem. Thanks, Jackie. Okay.